guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. I wanted to talk today about energy drinks. Um, everybody should know what I mean when I say energy drinks. We're talking about Red Bull, we're talking about Monster Energy Drinks. Um, there are many generic um, copies of the original energy drinks. They're all based on a very similar um, uh, number of ingredients. They all contain generally contain f uh, caffeine uh, they and they all generally contain high amounts of sugar um, many people consume energy drinks and um, I think a lot of people are unaware of actually how bad they are for your health those people that regularly uh, wa uh, watch my channel watch my videos I'm sure will understand um, how how bad energy drinks are um, but I just wanted to uh, make a video because sometimes people who are not um, subscribed to my channel will come across one of my videos uh, and it might actually um, save their health in the long term. So this video is really aimed at those people. I know my regular subscribers will know that this is information. Uh, they'll know this information and they'll know to avoid these types of drinks. Uh, energy drinks really are no different to soft drinks. So um, your typical colas are no different to your energy drinks. They contain roughly the same amount of sugar and they generally all contain caffeine. There are other things in some of the energy drinks like ginseng, uh, but they're in concentrations that are very low. They're really kitchen sink formulas where they throw lots of things in to try and make it look like uh, they will provide energy, but really um, what they effectively are, are is carbonated um, sugar drinks. Uh, and they put the caffeine in there because the caffeine will give you a short-term feeling of energy because it stimulates the central nervous system. But the real detrimental effect of these drinks is the sugar that they contain. Now, a typical cola drink will contain about 35 grams of sugar per 330 mils. They tend to come in 330 mil um, cans, the smaller cans. Um, an energy drink, a 500 mil can of energy drink, which is now quite common, the larger cans will contain about 55 grams of sugar, uh, and that is that is almost ident an almost identical sugar content. So colas and energy drinks contain about the same amounts of sugars. Um, just to give you an idea of how much um, sugar there is in a typical uh, 500 mil, um, so that's half a litre, a typical 500 mil can of uh, energy drink, these are the larger cans, um, I'll get, I've, I've weighed out the amount of sugar that you would find in the can, and here is a glass containing your 55 grams of sugar. So every time you consume one of those energy drinks, you are consuming this amount of crystalline refined sucrose that's what you are uh, consuming um, that's a lot of sugar that's possibly more sugar than you should be eating uh, really in a week uh, in that form um, you should really try and eliminate all refined crystalline sugar from your diet but that is certainly too much to consume in a single sitting in a single drink and this is really why these uh, drinks are so unhealthy. There have been many studies that have looked at the effects of sucrose and fructose um, on uh, insulin resistance and weight gain. Now, the mo a molecule of sucrose contains, uh, it's, it's a disaccharide and it contains fructose. Fructose is a monosaccharide. And when you add it to glucose, you bond it to glucose, it forms sucrose. Um, it's the fructose in the sucrose that is damaging. It's the fructose that causes insulin resistance. Now, the effects that fructose has on the liver are very similar to the effects that alcohol have on the liver. Over the long term, there is a disease uh, called alcoholic fatty liver, which is a gradual accumulation of fatty acids in the liver, and this occurs from consuming too much alcohol. There is a, a very equivalent disease, which is pathologically almost identical, called non-alcoholic fatty liver, and this is produced by consuming fructose. The way the liver deals with fructose and alcohol is almost identical, and the the pathology it causes in the liver which is non-alcoholic fatty liver or alcoholic fatty liver which can then lead to cirrhosis of the liver is almost identical so fructose is in high con in high amounts in its refined form fructose is highly damaging to the liver 
It's very similar in the way that alcohol can damage the liver. But fructose will also cause insulin resistance in the peripheral tissues uh, and it will also cause insulin resistance in the liver as well. Um, the reason it does this is because the fatty acids accumulate in tissues. The, the, the fructose is very rap rapidly converted down the de novo lipogenesis pathway. It's converted into fatty acids. Those fatty acids are then exported uh, to the tissues. Some of them accumulate in the liver and cause insulin resistance and, and metabolic problems there. And some of them accumulate uh, in the tissues of the body. Those fatty acids may interfere with the insulin resist, uh, with the insulin receptor, which gradually um, uh, decreases its sensitivity to insulin and causes the development of insulin resistance. And once insulin resistance develops, uh, it's inevitable that weight gain will follow, and you will develop abdominal obesity, and you will gradually uh, your health will gradually deteriorate from there as you gain more weight. Uh, and unfortunately that will lead to secondary diseases such as cardiovascular disease and it may even be a cause or a, a, a you know a participating cause in the development of cancers so it's very important not to allow insulin uh, uh, insulin resistance to develop and unfortunately the compound in our diets that seems to be the primary driver of insulin resistance is fructose in its refined crystalline form um, so these 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 drinks are very damaging, and research is showing this. Um, research is showing that consumption of soft drinks uh, is associated with the development of insulin resistance, and really there is no difference between an energy drink and a soft drink. They are all the same. You may call certain types of soft drink energy drinks because they they contain very high amounts of caffeine, but they are no different to the normal soft drinks that also contain large amounts of sugar. That sugar is in a form that is very readily digested. Uh, it produces something called the nutrient overload system as well. And, and the, the sugars get into the system so quickly they overload the cells with nutrients. And the cells react by um, that, that, that the nutrients passing into the cells cause this generation of, of, of energy. And every time energy is produced in a cell, uh, there is also a, a, a concomitant a, a, a production of um, free radicals. Um, now, if you trickle energy into a cell, that uh, free radical generation is controlled by the antioxidants in the cell. Each cell has its own ant antioxidant defenses, uh, and those antioxidants are quite capable of controlling the, uh, the free radicals that are generated from normal energy production. However, if you force large amounts of energy into the cell in a very short space of time, the free radicals eventually um, they, they, they use up all of the antioxidants in the cell because there's simply too much energy being produced and at that point you start to get uh, problems with the production of oxidative stress. Um, that will lead to disease. It also may be one of the reasons why the insulin receptor becomes um, desensitive to insulin. Uh, the cell is effectively trying to protect itself against further nutrient overload. If you start pouring nutrients into a cell, that cell will will will, will generate free radicals. And, and one of the ways the, cells try, the cell tries to protect itself is by stopping the sugar getting into the cell. And that is by decreasing the sensitivity of the cell to insulin. The sugar then stays in the blood instead. And that raises your blood sugar levels and leads to diabetes. Those, these sugars are very, very damaging. Western disease is really a cause uh, of eating refined carbohydrates particularly sugars I mean just if you have a look at the amount of sugar weigh it out yourself to prove to yourself how much sugar there is in one of these drinks so this and this would be the equivalent amount of sugar uh, obviously the ratio would change but the equivalent amount of sugar that would be in your typical colas and all of your soft drinks that's a, a lot of sugar it's too much sugar uh, it's certainly too much sugar in a single drink, it's possibly too much sugar in a single day, it may even be too much sugar in a, in a week. Uh, and many people are consuming uh, at least one, maybe two of these drinks every day. Um, now, the caffeine itself is uh, is one of the tricks that the, uh, the companies use because the caffeine does make you feel better when you initially uh, uh, take the drink and this allows the, the consumer to convince themselves that they are actually getting energy from the drink but of course um, the sugar is starting to damage and have detrimental effects on your blood sugar and therefore over time your physiology will deteriorate and also your capacity to use your brain will deteriorate because uh, 
um, your brain re requires a stable blood glucose levels in order to be able to function. The brain uses almost exclusively glucose as a source of energy. If you have blood sugar problems, if you're consuming a lot of refined sugars, you get uh, uh, wild swings in your blood sugar levels. And those wild swings then detrimentally affect your brain. They affect your behavior. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that many of the social problems that we see in society, uh, aggressiveness, um, uh, inability to work in groups, uh, a lack of uh, empathy for others. I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of these um, antisocial behaviours are actually caused by poor diet, um, which ultimately comes from uh, the consumption of too much, too many sugars and too many refined carbohydrates in a, a typical Western diet. Um, so it's very important to eliminate these types of drinks if you want to maintain your health. Now I will include also fruit juices. Uh, there is research starting to be produced now that is showing that fruit, the physiological effects of fruit juices, uh, they're the typical fruit juices you could buy, orange juice, apple juice, the physiological effects of those fruit juices are no different to soft drinks such as colas and energy drinks. They have exactly the same physiological effects and they cause exactly the same types of insulin resistance. There is much less research published on fruit juices but it is starting to trickle out from the research groups and those groups that have compared um, fruit juices with soft drinks have found really there is no difference. Uh, and this is because you're taking again, you're taking normal plant material, the fruit that contains the fructose, and you're refining on taking out the sugars and leaving behind the fiber. And this is really the crux of the matter. If you leave the fructose in the fruit, you find it very difficult first to overconsume the fructose. It's very difficult to eat more than about two apples. You can do, you can force yourself. But if you eat an apple, the second apple becomes more difficult to eat, the third one even more difficult. And it, 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 the fruit in itself is a natural barrier to eating the fructose. Some fruits are much easier to overconsume than others, but generally it's not easy to overconsume fruit because it has this natural. Um, has a high water content, a high fiber content, and therefore there is a limiting factor on how much you consume. And this limits the nutrient overload you can actually obtain from fruit. However, if you take the juices out of the fruit, it becomes very easy to over consume them. Uh, and those, uh, just like in a soft drink, those, those sugars will get into your blood much too quickly and they will uh, deliver themselves to the cells much too quickly. And that will cause the nutrient overload uh, syndrome. And they will pass into the liver, pass down the de, de novo lipogenesis pathway, and they will become converted to fatty acids which will then cause all sorts of physiological problems. Um, so fruit in itself even though it contains fructose is not um, damaging as long as you don't overeat it and there is a you know a self-limiting uh, uh, you know self-regulatory uh, regulatory, um, capacity of fruit to limit that intake. Uh, that is not really uh, the same uh, that you get from fruit juice. You can really consume a number of apples worth of sugar uh, in a, even even in a single glass of apple juice. So, and this is why refining the sugars out of foods is so damaging. The fiber is the is the protective effect, and the fiber has a a, a normal effect that it, it prevents overeating the foods. And the more fiber that is in the fruit or is in the the carbohydrate, even with the starch, the the more difficult it is to overconsume those sugars. As soon as you refine those sugars out and you crystallize them and you put them in drinks, they become very easy to overconsume, and that is the main problem. Um, so, I, w I would recommend that you um, you know you moderate your fruit intake. There is I I personally think um, people overreact with about fruit. Uh, I think fruit generally uh, is, is you know it's, it's nothing wrong with consuming fruit people do seem to think that the fructose in fruit is damaging as well yes it is if you over consume it but I would encourage people to eat fruit I would encourage people obviously to eat vegetables um, you know primarily base your plant intake on vegetables because they have much generally have much lower sugar uh, contents but there's nothing wrong with fruit but as soon as you take that fruit and you squeeze the juices out of it it does become damaging so you have to be aware of that as soon as you add any type of sugar to a drink that is damaging as well um, so it's something to be something to be aware of now if you are consuming energy drinks uh, and you want to cut down I would suggest that you just stop drinking them um, you know that I don't agree with this cutting down 
um, strategy in order to be able to wean yourself off these drinks. If you want to give up these drinks, if you know they're bad for your health, just stop drinking them. It's as simple as that. Find something else to drink. I would recommend water. Now, when you first cut these drinks out of your diet, you may find that water um, is not particularly palatable uh, and you miss the sweet taste, but th that will disappear within a few days. Once you stop drinking these types of drinks, once you, once you stop drinking sugar, once you stop adding sugar to your tea, it only takes a few days for you to forget how sweet the taste is. And what I find is that most people that have given up sugar, most people that don't consume sugar, when they actually consume anything like these soft drinks or they put sugar in their tea, they find it too sweet. And that's really where you should be. These drinks are too sweet but you've become used to them and therefore you find that you have to have that sweetness. As soon as you cut that sweetness out of your diet, you really don't miss it at all. Uh, and, and what you find is that fruits and vegetables that you don't find sweet then become sweet and they actually become palatable. And this is a problem why most people think that fruits and vegetables are bland. It's because they've become accustomed to consuming very high uh, uh, drinks which contain very high amounts of sugar and their palates have changed and therefore the, f the foods that we're supposed to eat and those foods that are actually very tasty and they have you know they have a very uh, nice uh, sweet taste you, uh, most people don't actually taste that sweetness because they're so used to such a high concentration of sugar in their drinks so have a think about your energy drink and your soft drink intake and also your fruit uh, fruit juice intake and just bear in mind how much sugar there is uh, in those types of drinks and what that's actually doing to your physiology. There are many other people, many other people making videos, many other people writing articles on the dangers of sugars. There have been some great books that have been written on uh, the dangers of sugars and the dangers of refined sugars. Uh, and just take a take a, a moment to think about how that's actually going to damage your health uh, and, and what it's doing to your not just your you know your physiology but also your brain and your capacity to think. It's what it's doing to your discernment, what it's doing to your ability to concentrate, how that's affecting your life. This has a knock-on effect on the rest of your life and your health. Once it's gone, unfortunately, uh, it, it is very difficult to get back. And this is one of those paths that I would really strongly recommend people don't go down. Once insulin de resistance develops, once the weight has been put on, once your physiology has changed and once you're on that path towards diabetes, it's very, very, very difficult to get back uh, your health. Uh, and it's only when you lose your health that you realise how important it is. So I would consider, uh, really, of all the foods that you should avoid, um, these energy drinks, soft drinks, fruit juices, they're the ones really to cut out completely from your diet. They have no place, I don't think, in a healthy diet. Uh, and therefore, uh, I would really uh, strongly suggest that you don't uh, don't consume them at all. Um, I'll put some links to some articles uh, that I've written uh, on my blog that explain uh, the dangers of fructose. Uh, many of the experiments that have been done have been done in animals. Um, now, these studies were actually criticised originally because of the amount of sugars that they used in order to be able to induce insulin resistance in the animals. Uh, what's happened is that subsequently um, reassessment has been made about the amount of sugars that people actually consume uh, and there have been some editorials in some journals that have actually said well you know some of these early studies got it spot on people do actually consume this amounts of sugars and therefore these models were actually quite good so the original criticism of, of these models um, you know feeding too much sugar to the animals uh, a lot of that has actually subsided and now these studies where they're looking at the effects of sugar on animals, some of the earlier studies actually uh, interpreted the amount of, of sugar that is in some human diets actually quite accurately. And it's a lot more than most people think. Um, so I will put some links uh, to those studies uh, in the description box below. Uh, but there are there is a lot of information on sugar. And I would suggest that you, um, you know, you do your own research and you come to your own conclusions about this, because really, um, it's probably one of the best decisions. If you cut out sugar and you cut out these drinks, it's probably one of the best decisions that you'll make in terms of improving your health. So I hope that was useful. Um, stay healthy, uh, eat well and protect yourself. And I will see you soon for another video. And in the meantime, take care. <laughs>